Well, hi, everybody. I'm Don Stewart. Welcome to episode 31 of Evil Angels, Demons, and the Occult, The Dark World. We're on Appendix 3, which basically asks the question, are the sons of God in Genesis chapter 6 angels? And we're finishing the evidence pro and con. In other words, for and against the angel view. We're on the 12th reason why certain people believe it was angels. And the reason is the New Testament makes it clear that the sons of God were angels. And they give us three passages, 1 Peter 3, 19, which we did last time, 2 Peter 2, verses 4 to 6, and Jude 6 and 7. And we're going to finish that off this time. We're going to go now to 2 Peter chapter 2 and verses 4 to 6 and talk about it. First of all, just a reminder, the first one, 1 Peter 3, 19, we said that didn't work when it talked about the um, preaching to the spirits in prison. We said the spirits weren't fallen angels. They were people living at the time of the flood who uh, were preached during that time, preached by Noah, preacher of righteousness, and he preached, uh, you know, the flood was coming to him. And so it had nothing to do with fallen angels. That is not mentioned in the context that all angels are not mentioned in 1 Peter 3, 19. So they don't link fallen angels to the flood, as we mentioned uh, again, we sp it's speaking of the humans that the Lord evangelized through Noah at the time of the flood. We deal with this in more detail in our book, Hell, the Final Destination for Unbelievers. All right, so now we're going to look at 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 6, and that is the second passage that is given, that is said to teach that angels were the ones who were the sons of God in Genesis chapter 6, verses 2 and 4. And uh, here's what the passage said. There are three, first of all, there's three illustrations given to us in this passage, namely the angels who sinned, the judgment of the flood, and the destruction of Sodom. So let's read the passage again, then look at it. For God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to pits of darkness held for judgment and did not spare the ancient world, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness with seven others when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly. And if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to destruction by reducing them to ashes, having made them an example of what is coming for the ungodly. So basically what we have is 2 Peter 2, 4 to 6. There's three illustrations used in this passage here. Now, notice something. There is no linking in this passage, in these three verses, of angelic sin with the flood. The first illustration was the original angelic fall. The second is the judgment of the flood. And there are two separate or distinct incidents which cause the Lord to punish gross sin. They're not linked together in this passage as the same event. That's very important for us to understand. Now, the third illustration is God's punishment of Sodom and Gomorrah, and it, of course, had nothing to do with angelic sin. So Peter basically tells us the result of this original angelic rebellion was that certain of these supernatural beings were placed in chains. This is a symbolic way of speaking of their confinement. And we know from Scripture that other angels have been free to roam the world as demons. So you've got one group of angels that are chained another in some type of you know prison waiting to be some will be released actually during the great tribulation period and others that are free to roam have been free to roam as demons now again we want to stress these are three separate illustrations of the lord punishing horrific sin on three different occasions nothing is specifically said or alluded to about angelic sin at the time of the flood now, Jude 6 and 7, this is the big one. This is one we're going to take a little bit more time on because it's the one that's most often used to prove. They say, aha, see, the Bible does talk about angels being involved in, in sin with earthly women at the time of the flood. Okay, but let's again read what Jude 6 and 7 says. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. That's Jude 6 and 7. Now, what we find here is Jude adds to what Peter had written about the angels who've sinned. He tells us two other things. This is from the Cornerstone Bible Commentary. In 2 Peter 2, 4, they're simply called the angels who sinned, but Jude describes them with two parallel clauses. 
first, they did not stay within the limits of authority that God gave them, their archon, and that's the Greek word there, or domain or sphere of authority. So they didn't stay within their sphere of authority or their domain. That God-given domain was heaven, and they as angels were to be servants of God, messengers to humanity. Second, Jude said they rebelled and left the place where they belong. And that's from the Cornerstone Biblical Commentary and explaining what uh, Jude adds to 2 Peter 2.4. Now, while these angels did not stay within their own authority and left the place where they belong, as was true with the writings of Peter, nothing, nothing is said about them sinning at the time of the flood. Now, there's something that's very important we need to point out right now, the proper way of translating Jude. Furthermore, this translation that we have just used is from the New King James Version, and it is the proper way to translate Jude 7. Unfortunately, many modern translations add the word angels after the phrase in a similar manner to these. Therefore, the translation ends up saying in the same manner as these angels. However, this is not what the Greek text says. The word angels is not in the Greek text. Now, while Jude may have been referring to them, he also may not have been. Translators are to re render what is in the text, not add a word to help us understand what they think the author may be saying, particularly in a controversial passage such as this. Therefore, these translations have gone too far by placing the word angels in the text in Jude 7. It would have been much more preferable if they had a note in the margin explaining that it could be referring to angels that, that were mentioned in the previous verse. Now, here, our next heading is important. The word these likely refers to the inhabitants of Sodom, not angels. Furthermore, as John Calvin stated centuries ago, the word translated these in Jude 7 likely refers to the inhabitants of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Here's what Calvin wrote in his commentary on Jude. When he says the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, I do not apply these words to the Israelites and the angels, but to Sodom and Gomorrah. It is no objection that the pronoun is masculine, for Jude refers to the inhabitants and not to the places. That's from John Calvin. All right, so here's what Calvin is arguing, and this makes perfect sense in the context. Jude uses the masculine pronoun these to refer to the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. In other words, the cities around Sodom were destroyed because they sinned in like manner as these. In other words, as these ones, namely the Sodomites. Therefore, it is not angels who are in view, but rather the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, along with those of the cities around them that were involved in the same type, the same type of sexual perversion. And this is why all of them were destroyed. Now, we're going to heartily agree with the conclusion of Bible scholar J. Darrell Charles in the Expositor's Bible Commentary Revised Edition, what he wrote about this passage in Jude. He says, virtually all commentary, past and present, has related Jude 6 and 2 Peter 2, 4 to Genesis 6, 1 to 4 in some way or another. The interpretation of the sons of God, Genesis 6-2, following the lead of Clement of Alexandria, is largely due for two reasons. Number one, a mistaken linking of the angels in Jude 6 with Sodom and Gomorrah in verse 7. And number two, the association of demons with Jude 6, 1 to 4, that began to emerge in the second century BC Jewish interpretation. Now, here's his punchline. Contrary to the view of numerous commentators, there is nothing concerning angels in Genesis 6 that is mentioned in Jude. Close quote. Uh, J. Darrell Charles from Jude, the Expositor's Bible Commentary. Indeed, nothing whatsoever. So, but what if it does refer to angels? Let's answer that question. There is something else we must emphasize. Namely, even if the Greek word translated as these in Jude 7 is referring back to angels in the previous verse, the issue of the identity of the sons of God is not solved. Why do we say that? Well, as we just noted, the parallel passage in 2 Peter 2, 4 refers to the original fall of certain angels. It has nothing to do with angelic sin at the time of the flood. Therefore, it would have been the original rebellion of angels that is compared to the sin of Sodom. So, if so, the question becomes this, in what sense did the people of Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities sin in a manner that was similar to the angels who originally rebelled against the Lord? Great question. How are their sins similar? 
Well, the men of Sodom and those who lived in the surrounding cities, along with the angels who rebelled, strayed from God's original created order. In Sodom, there were numerous sins, including sexual perversion, which distorted the purpose for which men and women were initially created. So it's the distortion of the original purpose that was there in Sodom. That was their sin. Now, with the angels, it was a perversion of the reason for their creation. Indeed, they were created to serve the Lord, to do his will and his will only. But what happened? Well, these angels, instead of obeying him, chose to follow another created being, the one who became Satan, the adversary, the devil. With this rebellion, they distorted God's original purpose for them. So to sum up, there is no need whatsoever to make this passage refer to angels who sinned at the time of the flood or connect the sexual sins of Sodom and the Sodomites to angels none whatsoever. Now, one other thing we want to mention, then we'll leave reason number 12. Evil angels do not materialize as humans. Finally, as to the argument that angels at times have appeared in bodily form, we must make the following observation. The angels who visited Sodom were good angels, not evil angels. The same is true of every other recorded appearance in scripture of angels materializing in bodily form. Indeed, there is no example in scripture of evil angels ever materializing into a human body. None. While the Bible speaks of fallen angels, demons commandeering a human body by the way of demon possession, this is not the same thing as an angel somehow materializing into a human-like body. Nothing like this is ever found in scripture. Never. All right, so let's move on to reason 13, and that is uh, the argument is for the sons of God in Genesis 6. Well, the angels were later judged for their sins. One of the arguments against the angel view is that they are nowhere singled out for punishment because of their sin. We've mentioned this a number of times, actually. Only the human race was punished for the sin of Genesis 6. Those who hold the angelic view counter this by saying that the angels were not immediately judged by God, but will eventually receive their punishment. The passages in 1st and 2nd Peter, as well as in Jude, refer to their future punishment. Well, here's our response to reason 13. Because there is no mention of angelic punishment in the Genesis passage, it is clear that it is only the punishment of humanity that is in view. As we have just observed, the punishment of the angels in 2nd Peter and Jude refers to their original sin, rather than the sin immediately before the flood because there was no sin of angels immediately before the flood. If it does not then, in other words, if it does not refer to uh, angelic punishment, then there is seemingly no reference in scripture for the punishment of their original rebellion when they initially followed that created being who became the devil. All right, we're now to our last reason, number 14. All the other views have many problems. Finally, it's often stated that the various explanations of Genesis 6, which argue that humans and not angels are the sons of God, are all deficient in one way or another. In other words, none of these non-angelic views explains all the evidence. Consequently, the angel view or the angelic view is the best way of taking in all the facts. And that's the last reason, number 14. Well, here's our response. While there may be some difficulties about the various non-angelic views, this does not mean that the angel view is any better. Indeed, as we have seen, the reasons that are given to support the angel view all have reasonable responses to reject it. Therefore, the angelic view should not merely be accepted because the other views have difficulties. Let me give you a however here. However, as we have noted in our book, the Sons of God, the Flood, and the Tower of Babel, which is volume four in our series, The Bible and Science, Are They in Conflict? We find that at least two of the alternative views, namely that the sons of God were either the godly line of Seth, or they're simply referring to men in general, have much going for them. And we develop that in this book. In other words, these specific theories fit the context of Genesis 6, as well as the rest of the book of Genesis. In fact, both of them fit very, very well. Either one will work. All right, so let's conclude on the reasons given for the angel view. As we have looked at the various reasons offered for the angel view, we have found them unconvincing. While there are many excellent Bible students who hold this interpretation, as we have just observed, we believe the evidence to support this point of view is sadly lacking. 
And that's our conclusion. So the 14 specific uh, reasons that are given in various texts by scholars and non-scholars alike, it just doesn't fit the facts. This doesn't make a case whatsoever. But that is not the main problem with the angel view. What we're going to start next time is two specific reasons why the angel view does not work. We're going to look at general problems, three general problems with the angelic view, and 20 specific problems with the angelic view. And when we're through, we think you will agree with us that the idea that angels were involved with human women during the time of the flood just does not fit the context of what the Bible has to say. All right, I'm Don Stewart. Thanks for watching. We are finished now with part two, and we're going to next time go to part three, and that is the general and specific problems with the angel view, as well as looking in detail at these 23 separate points we're going to make, showing that the angel view just does not fit the facts. Again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Until then, may the Lord richly, richly bless.